So, as you may have heard, about two weeks ago, Apple held their annual Worldwide Developer Nerds Conference event, and during that event, they announced iOS 17. And unlike in the previous years, this time around, Apple has decided to make the developer beta version available to everyone. So you don't need an Apple ID with a registered Apple developer account. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can download the newest version of iOS, the beta version on your iPhone and maybe iPad and see if you like it or not before it comes out later this year. And I think a word of caution should be in place because as you may know, uh, beta versions can be unstable, especially the developer beta versions. They are not intended for everybody to use. Unlike, for example, public betas that I think are gonna come out in like a month or maybe more. But this is a preview, so if you wanna try your hands on the newest iOS version, just follow this guide and later in the video, I'm just gonna show you some of my favorite features and yeah, let's go. All right. So this time around, Apple has made it actually very easy to install the beta version. So all you need to do is pretty much go into your settings, scroll down until you see the general menu, go into software update, tap on the beta updates menu over here and tap on iOS 17 developer beta. Now, if you go back, what you're gonna see is that you have the beta version available for download. So yeah, let's just download and see how it goes. Oh yeah, and as you can see, the very scary message from Apple stating that this is a beta software version intended for beta software development. So proceed with caution, especially if this device that you're installing it on is a daily driver. So yeah. All right, so now that we have iOS 17 installed on our device, uh, I'm just gonna walk you through some of the best features in iOS 17 and some of the biggest features because it's not very feature packed. Uh, it's more about like customization and then some options around like messaging and FaceTime, etc. more under the hood stuff. But I think there is also a couple of cool features that could be helpful to some people. So let's go. All right, so one of the things that Apple highlights on the website as well and talked about during the event is that now you can have these things called posters for contacts and as you can see once you launch the phone app it also suggests you to set up your own and share it with your friends to kind of uh, express yourself and make sure you appear like the total nerd that you are and yeah so let's see let's see what we can do as you can see you can enter your name Let's see, let's try like Memoji. Sure, yeah, let's suppose that I'm happy all the time. Tap next. We have color options as well. Uh, yeah, I think I kind of like it this way. And we can change how the name looks as well, the font. And I think this is like kind of unexpected coming from Apple, like this kinds of controls. So yeah, I have all kinds of different color options for the text. And so yeah, this if shared with my friends, this is how I'm gonna appear whenever I call them. And so as you can see, you have your poster, which is gonna be shared with your contacts and friends so that they can see your beautiful face whenever they're calling you or your beautiful avatar. And now as you can see, for example, uh, I have a contact of an another person here, create a poster for them as well like this, tap next, create the poster like this. Here you can see the name of the contact. You can apply some filters, just tap on done. And yeah, this is gonna be the poster that you see whenever this contact calls you. All right, so um, during the event, Apple talked a lot about the iMessage improvement that they've done in iOS 17 uh, and one of the most more controversial things being like the check-in function, like uh, the one that you can send to, I guess, your friends to know um, that you have arrived somewhere safely. Uh, and in, in order to access that, you're gonna go into this menu, scroll down, and there you're gonna have this check-in option. 
but yeah, you can let your friends know that you arrived home safely. And the other aspects, let's say I'm not gonna talk about, you know? So another thing Apple also mentioned, this is a kind of a small thing, but I guess it can make uh, somewhat of a difference for some people when using iMessage and that is the swipe to reply option. So if you swipe on, an, on a message that you received, you can reply directly to that message. As you can see, pretty simple and it's gonna show you the thread as well. And another thing with iMessages and not only uh, was the feature that Apple talked about a lot with the stickers uh, and the fact that you can now create your own uh, stickers from your photos and for example, animated stickers from live photos. So let me show you how that works. So I have created like two stickers over here. This one is a photo. This one is a live sticker, for example, and when you send a live sticker, it's gonna go send over as an animated uh, thingy. And in order to create this, uh, for example, for the photo stickers, you go into the creating menu, you select photo, tap on add sticker, and then it gets added to the stickers drawer that they're calling. And here you can add like different effects like outline, and some like uh, shininess and things like that. Uh, so yeah. So one of the things Apple also talked about during the event was the so-called sticker drawer, which means that all of the stickers that you create in different applications are gonna be accessible in all the others as well. So for example, the sticker that we created just now in iMessage, we can also use that in the freeform app, for example, if we just tap on this button right here, select stickers, and yeah, we have access to our stickers. One more thing that you can do with stickers and the sticker drawer is that you can actually now create your own animated stickers using live photos. So for example, if I have this photo over here, I can tap and hold on the subject, it's gonna bring up this menu, tap on add sticker, it's gonna add to the sticker drawer that you can later access, for example, in an app like iMessage or this Freeform app, tap on stickers, and then add, if you add the animated sticker, for example, you have the play button over here. And as you can see, you can now use like animated live stickers. All right, so one of the few things that was actually changed within the home screen interface with this update uh, were the interactive widgets. And one of the examples of this is that, uh, for example, if you add a music widget on your home screen, you can play or pause the music without going into the app. So if you tap on the play button on the widget, it starts playing that song. And then, for example, if you have something like this and calendar widget, it adds an event and makes the experience of using widgets like uh, less of a hassle and I guess more convenient. All right, so one of the changes that I think makes the experience, especially the hands-free experience of using an iPhone a lot better is making Siri more conversational, right? So let me show you what I mean. Like it's not gonna respond to me mentioning it in this uh, speech, but when I say its name, closer to the device, so like, Siri, what time is it? Add a reminder to buy bread. Okay, I added buy bread to the list. Let me know if you'd like to add a time or location. But yeah, um, I think you can see what the value here would be like, instead of every time saying like, hey Siri, do this, do that, do that. Uh, and I'm sorry for enabling all of your series, all, all of your series is, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I think you know what I mean. Now this next feature I think is gonna make like so many people happy. It's such a small thing, but also such a convenient feature to have. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So especially like if you create a lot of content or take a lot of photos on your smartphone and your iPhone, so if you go into the camera app, and yeah, as you can see, uh, for uh, like on the screen, a faint 
line appears that shows whether or not your photos are level and it also gives you a haptic feedback and this is this makes like taking photos so much more convenient and as you can see apple has tried doing it the apple way and it appears only whenever you're trying to align like your photo vertically or horizontally so let me show you how you can enable this it's not enabled by default in ios 17 so what you have to do is go into settings go into the photos menu and then no not the photos menu the camera menu and then what you're going to see is the level option down here and you just have to turn this on and it's going to make uh, your life a lot easier so yeah thumbs up all right so the last thing i want to show you is something called standby which is something that apple talked about during the event and it's a mode that basically activates whenever you have your iPhone connected to a MagSafe charger or with a lightning cable and set down horizontally, for example, on a nightstand next to you. And what it does is that it triggers this nightstand mode. So what it basically allows you to do is to turn your iPhone into a clock, for example, on your nightstand. It's going to show you the time, the calendar and some other information and you also have like different kinds of uh, widgets so you have the alarm and the weather and i guess you're gonna have some more things coming out with like third-party developers so yeah i think if you charge your phone at night or it's next to you at night on a MagSafe stand uh this is a pretty handy feature all right so last but not least are the new wallpaper options that you have as you can see in the weather and astronomy section you have a whole bunch of different new options available so for example like Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, the solar system, the photo I think has been updated here. You also have like Mars, other options also as you can see you have all these kaleidoscope options. Um, you have the Unity wallpapers, you have some new colors here for example. So yeah, some pretty cool new wallpapers uh, and I think that's all for the features today. So yeah, I'd say overall it's like an iterative update, right? Because it doesn't have any like major overhauls or changes to major parts of the interface, just like Apple usually does. But I kind of like the new approach that Apple has taken with the new software updates. It definitely doesn't give you a whole lot of control, like for example, you would have on an Android device. It's definitely a more controlled experience, but I kind of like that it gives you more control over the experience that you have so that you can personalize it to your liking, for example. And also, I think it's worth to mention that this is only the first few developer betas and a couple of months down the road, I think they're also gonna release the journal app, for example, which is gonna be a new addition. And I think there are gonna be uh, some more new features, although probably nothing like huge, because if it was something huge, then they would have presented it during the event. So yeah, uh, if you like this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe to the channel if you don't wanna miss videos like this one and comment what your favorite feature from iOS 17 is. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.